Welcome to the 2022 announcement of the winners of the PEFC photo contest. Every year PEFC celebrates the best photos from around the world demonstrating how important forests are and why they are important to us. We do this because forests are at the heart of our work. And this photo contest gives photographers from around the world the opportunity to show us how forests are at the heart of their work, of their passion, of their hobby. This year is a special year because it is the first time that we can do this announcement in person. In order to do so, I've invited Lucas Prince to join us and to help us look at some of the technical aspects of what makes those photos great. It is fantastic for me because I'm not a photographer. My pictures are terrible. So it will be good to learn a little bit about what makes a good photo. Before we do that, Lucas, I suggest that we have a look at some of your photos and see the beauty that you try to convey in your work. Thank you, Torsten. Lucas, you are a professional photographer? No, I'm not. I'm an amateur. You are amateur. Looking at those photos, you are an amateur photographer. I am, yes. Wow. So when did you start taking I pictures? I got into photography heavily about six or seven years ago. It started off as a way to remember holidays, family events, and snowballed into a real passion. Wow. Which I have the time to do next to my other job. Amazing. And how long did it take until you were able to take pictures of such quality? It happened rather reasonably quickly, actually. Um, a couple of classes, a bit of understanding, lots of practice, and we got there relatively fast. Relatively fast. So there's hope for me. There's absolutely hope for you. I'm not at that level yet, and I... Well, I hope that I will be at some point in time. Let's look at the level of quality that we have received this year. So we have 12 winning photos. We do. How many, how many did we receive in total? 7,500 pictures were entered into the contest. 50 were reviewed by the jury. And these were winners from 13 distinct national contests. Wow, amazing. Seven and a half thousand. The jury's had quite a lot to do. Yeah, the jury's had quite a lot to do, and the quality of the PFC photo contest every year is off the chair scale. It's just so high. The quality of the pictures is mind-blowing every year. Then let's have a look at the first picture. Absolutely. The first picture is called Fresh Snow. The photographer is Sonia Fantini from Italy, and somehow I know this name. Absolutely. She's been a recurring winner for the past couple of years, the past couple of contests, delivering consistently high quality pictures. Her use of light and patterns this year and in past years has always been exceptional. In this case here, um, the patterns she brings in between the blue of the sky, the white of the snowy landscape, the leading lines and the cuts through the picture of the, the river that isn't quite frozen, just make, the, just draw the viewer into the picture and make everything stand out. And the fact that the, the photo was shot with a very high depth of field, which means it's in focus from one end to the other end, just blows everything away, just makes it so crystal clear. An excellent picture. Yes, and she talks about it being a dream landscape and an enchanting scenery. I fully agree with this. This is fantastic. Absolutely. And it's coming to that time of the year around here where we're going to be getting snow like that. So. We're all looking forward to it. That's true. And, and honestly, I have to say, whenever I see snow, I think of Finland. And the next picture comes from Finland. It's called Honka Metsa Dawn, and the photographer is Tuomo Vilkile. 
Absolutely. The one thing I've noticed with a lot of forest pictures is that due to the tranquility of forests, forest photography is often very soothing. And this is the case for this picture because the viewer is just drawn in. There are the leading lines of the path, of the trees, which sort of frame everything and bring a sort of mystique with a slight mistiness to the, to the picture. And on top of that, there's a shallow depth of field, which means only part of the picture's in focus, just adds a level of mysteriousness to the whole image. And the photographer's actually done quite a good use of the rule of thirds, where the picture's pretty much divided into three distinct bits. The bit on the left, which is closer to the trees, the bit in the middle, which is more green, and then the path that sort of leads you in, draws you in. There's even a little fork in the path, which just adds to the mysteriousness of the picture. I love it. I love it as well because there's so much that I can imagine happening there. I mean, I can imagine a, a family with kids walking down this path, a romantic couple. I can actually also see just some animals crossing over. I mean, I think this is a really nice picture. It inspires my imagination and, and that's what I like about good pictures because right, it makes my mind work. And that's what, what the beauty of good photography is all about. It is. Let's move to the other side of the planet for our next photo. It's called Sindoro Mountain. The photographer is Muchono Deva Kelana from Indonesia. And it shows a local from a village close to this mountain um, in sunlight, walking along those trees. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And from a technical perspective, there's great composition in this picture because it uses framing the colors, the areas of light and darkness, which bring, draw the viewer in along the road to the, um, to the subject. There are patterns, the greens, there's highlighting with the, with the, the play of light. And what really speaks to me with this picture is the different steps that there are on the picture. There's the dark, there's the light, there's more dark in the middle. There's a subject coming towards me. Another epic picture. Wow. It is, it is really nice. Not as cute though as the next picture. The next picture that we'll see is by far the cutest picture of this year's photo contest. Well, I'm not sure there are a couple of uh, contenders for that title. A couple of, of my personal favorite when it comes to cuteness, definitely. Uh, it's called New Life. The photographer is uh, Peter Hotzer from Slovakia. It shows a fox cut Obviously, very cute. And it's wandering in a mysterious forest. So what makes this picture special? Apart from the apparent cuteness. Apart from the apparent cuteness, what really set this picture out for me is the fact that the subject is cute and also it is looking straight at the camera. It's one of the biggest challenges in wildlife photographer. It's for the photographer to create a connection with his subject, which can mainly be done, especially with animals, because you can't pose them, through visual contact. Now, I personally have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pictures of animals who are all staring at the sky, staring at each other, staring at a fly, and that doesn't really lead to an impactful picture, unlike this one, where just th there's a slight subtle use of depth of field, which brings the fox out or the fox cub out from its background, and then a bit of lighting just makes everything pop in such a way that you're drawn in, the fox is drawn to you, and everyone's happy. Wow. It's an exceptional picture. Okay. For me, the cutest picture. So mm. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what other cute pictures just, will come across. Just you wait. Now, the next picture is a surprising picture uh, to me because it shows a canopy and, and we've I mean, I've seen loads of canopy pictures. This one by uh, Sane Rosenmey from Denmark is called Green, Green, Green. And it is, I think, the first canopy picture that made it into our top 12. It is. Uh, so every year we see hundreds of canopy shots. And the problem with canopy shots is they're often quite beautiful, the colors are nice. However, there's nothing to set them out from the competition. This one, however, has that little thing, that little special thing it needs, which is the light streaming through the canopy, which has cuts in it, which makes it look like lightning bolts crossing across the sky of the, of the canopy. The viewer's grabbed, drawn in, drawn up, and then all of a sudden has these patterns 
right at the um, right at the top of the picture. And I think the um, the photographer said that she was feeling a bit uh, tired when she came around. Yeah, to she she said she was quite low on energy. Yeah, I really hope that once that she had taken the picture and hopefully stayed around a bit to enjoy the moment, to enjoy the view, hopefully her energy would have been a little bit boosted. I mean, looking at that picture, my energy is certainly boosted. Mm. Moving on to the next picture, also again, right? Perhaps in the cuteness competition? In the cuteness competition, this one ranks highly. Okay, it's called Glances from Levente Baggi from Romania. And he stumbled upon those two little uh, birds in a forest close to his hometown. Lucky him, living somewhere where he can see owls like that. For owls, me, yes, owls, yes, that's how they're called. Yeah, it's a type of bird. Mm. For me, this picture is almost borderline comedy wildlife material. It is brilliant. It may have been taken in the morning. We could see that one owl is not a morning person or morning bird. And the other ones had a bit too much coffee like you do sometimes, so yeah. there you go. But from a technical perspective, the framing with the branches and the leaves just leaves you to no doubt as to what the subject is. The depth of field is perfect. The subjects are clear. The detail on the feathers when you see, this, see it big is unbelievable. And those eyes, again, I was talking about contact on the fox picture. The visual contact with those orange eyes that just look at you going, huh, is amazing. Yeah, and you are completely right. I sometimes have too much coffee. And if you want to know where I want to, where I would like to have my too much coffee, I'd love to have it in morning glory, right at these little waterfalls here. Absolutely. Um, the photographer here is Lukman Hakim Yusuf from Malaysia, and it's close again uh, to where he lives. It's a peaceful scenery that he shows. And seriously, if I was sitting there with a right big can of coffee, you wouldn't be able to drag me away. Mm, indeed. Again, this picture is very much highlights the tranquility of forests. Because what the photographers managed to do is through a slightly long exposure, about two seconds, he's frozen the movement of the water, he's frozen the movement of the trees, so you can clearly see the blurring. It isn't an instant in time, it's more of several instants in time flowing through the picture. That coupled with high depth of field, where the whole of the picture is in focus, you can see the, the sun has just uh, burst to a star. Uh, it just makes this peaceful, calming, relaxing, and the clarity is just off the, off the charts again. It's a wonderful picture. Now, when it comes to the next picture in the magic forests from Radoslav Czernici from Slovakia, is this calming? Is this peaceful? Is it mysterious? Is it spooky? Is it spooky? It is a fantastic picture. It's, 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 the photographer said it's, it's a mood that you see in a forest right after the rain. And, and I have to admit, that is exactly what I see right when I right, go into the forest, when it has rain. That is right, sunlight, rain, fantastic. If you have these mornings sometimes, then you can experience that, especially in spring. Take advantage of those, right? Mm, take advantage of them. Enjoy the colors, which are what jumped out at me in this picture. The saturated but the muted tones of the green with the light flowing through the trunk bringing a bit of context to the image the mist you can sort of feel the moisture rising up off the off the ground um coupled with the lighting streaming down gently it just pulls you in it's slightly for literary reference a bit like narnia you just get drawn through the wardrobe into the uh into the woodland scene it's love it so it's a really nice picture. And if you are then in this forest and, and, and you stay long enough, right, then you may see what we see in, in, the next for, in the next picture called In the Cold Dark Forests. Uh, the photographer is Elste Bakker from Belgium. And we are, we are with animals again. We're with animals again. Fantastic. It's a roebuck. Roebuck? How do you, how do you pronounce roebuck. it? Roebuck. Roebuck. Um, and obviously the roebuck was completely unaware that there was a right photographer. Either that or it's a very good model. 
posed very well. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And it, it looks really small among those really big trees. Yeah. So this is a picture that I had to take several looks at before really understanding it. The photographer's done great work framing the little deer with the trees. The shallow depth of field also brings the subject out by being having it slightly out of focus up to the subject and behind the subject, which just makes the little deer pop a little more. But when I actually looked at the, the technical side of the pictures and noticed that, um, as also the photographer pointed out in their blurb, that there was, it was quite a windy day. And that coupled with the high shutter speed of one eight hundredth of a second, just captured the exact moment where the deer was with the stalks of grass bending in the wind, just give it um, a detail and a precision, which I love. Very high on the cuteness scale here. Very high on, on that. Now, 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 cuteness brings me also to the next picture because I'm like, is it cute or is it scary? It's a beer in the snowstorm in Liptov. Our photographer is František Bohunčak from Slovakia and um, he says he tries to capture moments uh, in his photos that help him um, relieving unforgettable experiences. I mean, to me, this experience would be unforgettable and I would probably not be able to observe it for longer than about a tenth of a second before I would just right, yeah. run away. But that's the beauty of photography. It allows you to relive these moments from the safety and comfort of your own home while not being chased by a bear. Yes, so I'd rather have this on a wall and also not being in the snow. Oh, but you see, that's the thing about this picture is that the snow is obviously very prominent and it just captures the stillness of the moment that the photo was taken. I, I noted in my notes that I can actually hear the picture without actually hearing it because that sound when it's snowing heavily the quiet, the sound absorbing the snow. And that coupled with, again, brilliant depth of field, everything is just crystal clear. Um, despite the snow falling, you've still got details on the bear's little ears, his little nose. You, know, you just want to cuddle them yeah. and then run very fast. Yeah. Um, just the level of detailing, the way the bear stands out from the, from the blurred background, just, for me, this is my cuteness winner. So that's your cuteness. I mean, I understand that about the, 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 the ears, right? I mean, yeah. it's like, wow, it's, that's, that's, why we, that's why they are teddy bears, right? Indeed. Ah. From big animals, let's move over to small animals, to a kingfisher uh, by Isabel Modave from Belgium. It's called On Standby. And, and this picture actually made me learn something because she said what caught her eye was that the, 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 the atypical frame, and I was like, what's atypical about the frame? The frame is atypical because a kingfisher is usually found at the edge of water. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's in a tree. Yeah. And I think on top of the fact that the kingfisher is maybe slightly out of its natural environment, it's also the lattice framing. Um, which for me really drew my attention in because you have branches everywhere. They're crisscrossing across the screen. Some of them are in focus, like the one on which the, the kingfisher is, and also some of them are, are out of focus. So it gives you a whole mishmash, so to speak, of um, lines that sort of focus you in and then focus you into the kingfisher, which is perfectly executed using the rule of thirds again, bottom left-hand corner. And um, the detailing when you see this picture on a big screen is amazing because it um, you could see the feathers, you could see the blue, you could see the orange behind the eyes. And also these colors are based against the sort of muted grayer background of the background just makes the bird pop out. So these are the pictures that make the PFC photo contest what it really is. Yes, and I, I, I love this blue. I mean, it's such an amazing color. Uh, if, when you zoom in and you see it, you're like, wow, that is nature pure, right? Only nature can produce colors like this. Mm -hmm. I'd say, right, we should have a drum roll now. Something <laughs> like, right, because we are coming to the winning picture. The winning picture. Um, the winner is Beate Magadine from Sweden. Her picture is called 
small woods in a big forest. She says most people photograph, photograph either the complete landscape or the macro world. And she tried to do something in between. And that's what makes this picture so interesting. The fact, because I'm, I'm guilty of this, I will take a picture of a beautiful landscape, but then I will also get my macro lens out and take a picture of a fly two millimeters away from its nose. I've never really thought about combining the two, the wide, the small, and it's just that perspective. On top of that, there's also scale, there's detail, there's vignetting, which sort of brings you into the picture. And yeah, it's a fabulous picture and a worthy winner for sure. It's, a, it's definitely a, a worthy winner. And, and I hope all of you out there agree with the choice of the jury. Mm, absolutely. Which uh, brings us uh, to the end of uh, our little session here. Um, of course, not without saying thank you to those seven and a half thousand photographers in uh, 13 countries, all of those national juries uh, in 13 countries, and of course, you and the team at PFC yeah. for right, going through all of these pictures. It has been fantastic to have you here, uh, Lucas. Thank you for having me. And uh, I'd say let's have a quick look at what Beate has to say yes. about her picture. Congratulations, Beate. Congratulations. Over to you. Hey, hey from Sweden. My name is Beate and I'm a dog portrait photographer based near, near Gothenburg. Today I'm here and I uh, have to say a big, big thank you to the jury and all of the um, people from PEFC which were involved for liking um, my little forest scene so much. Um, we. We are, um, this is my husband and, and our dogs, we are nearly uh, every day in the woods and we love to be there uh, and enjoy the, the peace and uh, the sounds of the, um, of, of the nature, the splashing of the water uh, of the countless lakes located in the middle of the forest. Um, then we together hold our noses in the wind and absorb the power of nature. So thank you again for honor my photo and keep up the good work.